yeah people it's another scene the scene upon the scene tv you all watch raw down south right now we're in Christchurch. shirts they're chilling on a saturday evening with my man simon pike how's it going yeah Good. enjoying his drink yeah man <laughs> always you going to cut my pike oh man it's in my cup is my business no oh, <laughs> that's the secret i got you something so nice on your money and stuff or it could be joy it juice they call it joy juice mm. look out for the joy juice you yeah. know so yeah man i talk about the music man how, how, how pike got in music um well um i've been kind of working in music for a long time since i was about 11 i actually started music in church man church um yeah 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 i used to play choir yeah man no, <laughs> not, not quite choir as such i used to play guitar in the oh, church no. band and um and uh yeah, yeah i used to lead worship and so on and then mm -hmm. um i got started playing with this uh gospel reggae band for kdb mm -hmm. um and yeah when i played a couple of reggae on the hills with them and a couple of different shows and then I, I went to London for a couple of years, and uh, that that changed me a lot. And uh, yeah, that showed that showed that you wanted a little more music. Um, uh, I don't know how to put it exactly, but it just opened my mind a lot. I think, um, and yeah, it, it was a good experience. And no, no, uh, no, no looking back at all, man. I came back here, mm -hmm. and uh, I've been here for about a week, and I got a call from uh, the guys from Fully Loaded, and started working with Buggy and. And for the loaded band, and then through that, I ended up working with almost all of the local and then reggae. Boom, same old way. Um, yeah, well, that whole time, I mean, I was actually working a job as well because you know I have a son, and you know yeah. I had a you know I got to make ends meet. So yeah, I wasn't um, it, to take any step to come out as a solo artist was a, kind of a big deal because I needed to to uh, to make this my life and. I wasn't sure if that was really going to be feasible in my yeah, business, to be honest, you know. You know um, but it's worked out pretty well so far. Yo, I think Hot Roof Studios. Musical vibes, you see it. Reach out to all the Empress in the places of the world. It's a burning fire, you know that. But she says she loves me. decided to do it I asked a few close friends who were in the industry if I should do it and all of them told me no um, so I mean that kind of speaks for itself it's not an easy not an easy game to be in but um, you know if music is inside of you and it's really so integral to your life that you can't possibly move without it then you gotta do what you gotta do. I, I I do a couple of other things on the side, you know, just to to make sure that ends for yeah, me, you know. Yeah. So in terms of you and father, that you got your son and your family and stuff, mm -hmm. your the support has been and stuff. Um, when you say the family support, family stuff. support. Um, I guess you big son, <coughs> you family, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Um, my uh, I I think uh, my side of the family probably were a, l a little bit skeptical of this musical career. I mean, and and they had good reason to be mm -hmm. so, you know, because you don't know what's gonna happen. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just to be a realist about it, you know. Um, but at the same time, uh, I think I think sometimes when you know that something is for you, you gotta just do it. Um, but I've had great family support. Um, man, they're my crew, man. They're my team for real. So yeah. yeah. So I, I, in terms of like, you know, how we 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 judge music in terms of like, genuinely. Like, Rap, hip hop, pop, and stuff like that. You see yourself falling like one direction of Jay, or you just you fusing, or you just I don't know. Um, uh, as, as I, you know, we were, we were having a little chat earlier, and I was just saying something called it some reggae, yeah, something said pop, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, I I don't really know exactly what to call my music. I I, I figure pop is just the easiest word to use. Mm. It's just catchy music, mm -hmm. um, but. 
you know, you grow up in Barbados, you can't help but hear certain uh, certain rhythms and certain types of music as you're growing up. I mean, even if, like, like my dad's from England, you know, so I grew up hearing a lot of uh, UK music as well, right. but still, you go to school, you, you catch a van, you catch yeah. a bus, yeah. you still hear other yeah. things, you know, so exactly, so you're not going to possibly miss the Caribbean influence. And I mean, we never really consciously tried to put um, any kind of Caribbean rhythm into the music, but those rhythms kind of live inside of us, you know, so even you, people that are not necessarily that musical. You get you get the best of one for us? I, I, I think so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so in terms of like the, the radio playing and all that, like the feedback from the Asian community, or maybe the, you, you got, I would guess you got fans in London and stuff, in then wherever you're from, you're from. So. Sure, yeah, yeah. So how, how, how your music has been received and all that? Well, I, um, honestly, I was uh, very apprehensive at first, you know, to, mm -hmm. Just see how people were gonna take this, um, you know, this trans white boy doing this like reggae-ish thing, and I didn't know how it was gonna work, man. I didn't know how it was gonna work at all. I didn't really expect the love that I got, but mm. I seriously, I, I mean, wow, it's been amazing. I've been very, very happy um, with uh, with the response I've gotten so far. So you, brilliant. You, you think you could pinpoint your greatest moment so far in career? Like that, that <laughs> one thing that you, you feel you are right. Um, <laughs> Come on, you know, everybody's got in on this. I think mm, that this drink is tasty. Um, <laughs> I think that um, that for most of us as artists, we never really feel like we've arrived because um, uh, that's what makes you keep creating. You never really feel a hundred percent satisfied. I mean, I can't speak for anybody else. I shouldn't even try. But for me, I always yeah. feel like. There's got to be something, you know, there's always another step to go and I, I've only just started really. Um, I've had some great moments, uh, I've had some funny ones too, but, you know, um, the most recent one, I was, I played a show at the Frank Congo Hall with um, Hal Linton and, and uh, Miguel White and Nikki Nicole just uh, about a week or so ago. And uh, actually, on stage was nice, it was real cool, but um, backstage, man. We were just chilling out, you know, and um, Sun Rock, our Prime Minister, were hanging out in the back with us, and we just started a jam. And that jam was like a refill for the soul, man. <laughs> for real. That was, a, honestly, it's a beautiful moment, you know? I mean, I can't tell you that there's been one specific moment, but that's the most recent one, and like I say, well, it was just, uh, yeah, sure, uh, the music was pure, and it was a spiritual experience. So, so you do all your work in terms of the, you, the beats and stuff and you writing and production your yeah. and all that? Um, for the most part I, I, um, I do all of my writing and all of my production. Um, a couple of guys from Canada work with me on three of my tracks and... Um, How much tracks are going to be on uh, and an album. Yeah. Um, you be looking for like... I, I don't know really yeah, sure, yeah. The truth is that I have... I have a lot of music there. I'm not sure exactly um, the strategy as to when we're gonna release an album at the moment. Um, I gotta see kind of what uh, what my managers are thinking and okay. what's, what's the best move to make there. But no, yeah, no, no, yeah, and management because like, you know a lot, a lot of artists are still like, fighting for their stuff and all that. So you would recommend seeking management <coughs> or at least professional advice. In the um, I I would, yeah. You can do a lot more for yourself than you think. Don't ever be lazy mm -hmm. as an artist. Don't ever be lazy and rely on anybody else to do things for you. However, don't be pig-headed and think that you can do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. Because there might be people in life that know better than you and I'll be there and exactly sure humility is real important. I think in in this game what we're doing, you know, um, you got to be a hard worker, but you also got to be a humble person and someone who's ready to take advice. And, um, I think I was actually uh, reading this little uh, excerpt from Colin Powell talking about um, basically how he became a successful person. And one thing he was saying is you need to surround yourself with successful people surround yourself with people that know what's going on and I think that that is a, 
a very important thing. It's not to seek management just to have a manager, it's to seek somebody who really knows what they're doing and who can, uh, can guide you along the way. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So you got like, any any goals? I mean, like, apart from being successful, or you know, any 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 goals for this year? Any plans? This year, yeah, yeah, for this sure. Year, um, well, this year kicks off with the Backway Music Festival. Um, I'm gonna be there. That is uh, in in late January. Um, and then from there, I'm hoping to do a little bit of a UK tour. I've got a couple of dates uh, lined up. I just need to kind of work out some logistics with that. Um, so I think. A lot of live work um, and a lot of writing, a lot of writing, um, and hopefully an album. Yeah, stay tuned for the album. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, like any collaborations and all that. Um, collabs is an interesting thing, you know. Um, I'd love to do some collabs, and the funny thing is that since I play guitar. I end up in the studio a lot, um, playing guitar for a lot of different guys from here, you know, and um, um, like I've ended up playing guitar on some of Vision stuff and uh, Brimstone's tracks and uh, some of Buggy's tracks and, you know, uh, these collabs are actually happening all the time oh. uh, with the musicians in a way, it's just not, you might not necessarily realize yeah, that, oh, that guy played on this track and, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, like, for the, the music, I mean, like, Think you've been around for a while, and I understand. Like, how you, how you see like, the Barbados music industry building over the last couple of years and stuff? Like, from where it has been before to where it is now? Yeah, um. Because you know, it's not easy to actually, it's not easy to be a local artist. No, no, it's not. Um, so you see a change or it's still a fight? Well, you know, I'm, I, I'm young, I'm, I'm 24, and I, I, I don't know the things that a lot of the, the older guys would know. I hear that there was an absolutely amazing live music scene here uh, in, in years past. It clearly is not there right now. Uh, actually, live music has really uh, has been a tough one here. Uh, there's not a lot of places that, uh, that are full back. Pour form. me out from my river to your sea And hold me in your arms tonight Like you cast away Looking for the shore Swimming against the tide Hear the echoes of the waves as they fade away Cause now the tide has changed anybody to play local music. I believe that people should be, uh, in our country, should be saying, well, yeah, I want to support my guys. I want to support good music. And as artists and as musicians, we have a responsibility as well to make good music, to make music that the DJs and the, and the real personalities will feel like, I need to play that. So, so it's a given you got, you got to start with good quality music first. For sure, man. Yeah, I mean, I did. They have no responsibility to push stuff if they don't think it's good. Um, we we need to create good music, and um, and I think that with good music, there will always be a fan base, and if the fans are calling for it, it's always yeah, got to play it. Alright, so I'm like, I I won't put any spot right, but you think you can play a little? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's funny seeing TV. I hear you. I hear you. It's easy to pass um, if you if you play a little. It's a little. I, I, I can play something for you. I'll be honest with you. I got a bit of a flu right now. Yeah. Uh, I might, my singing might be very interesting. You might have to cut this about ten times. But yeah. So if yeah, if I got to sing for Rihanna, this is what I would say. Hey girl, I wonder if a girl like you would go downtown with a boy like me. I really wanna be. You're just my type I'm looking for a girl To take it over Come here with your shirt. That was totally nice for real, man. Uh, I ain't blessed with the voice, man. If only these walls could speak, they would tell you I miss you and I want you back again. I try to tell myself I don't need you, but you know I can't pretend. It's been so long, I still can't get over, over, over you, girl. If only these walls could speak. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying when it was nice. Yeah, it was nice. I, I, I don't know if it's not your shit, but I don't know if it don't make a difference. No, it was nice. I'm gonna give it. No, I just give it. Yeah, that doesn't matter. It will top it off. Yeah. So there you have it. Exclusive <laughs> in view of same one pipe. And I'll be going to drink my joy juice now. All right. Stay tuned. <laughs> nice one. That is not good for real. Though. Yeah, back at you again with another exclusive interview. Honey Scene TV, your host, Ron and Soph. Wait, no, you know what? It's actually chilling with Indra. Mm-hmm. Hi, Indra. Hi. How are you? I get it. You love me? I see I love you, so I love me. Well, until I get a reason, I just, that's pretty much my default. Yeah, she loves just me. Just love. Yes. So, yes. Talk about music, man. Music, well, music is all there is. Like what, I was telling you just First and first, what music means to you? Music is an extension of life. An extension of life. Like, love. every emotion there extension. is. There is music can catch it. Music can catch any emotion so you, in the world. You take music up for God? I think so. If people, if that's people's objective, because mm -hmm. whatever you put energy to, mm -hmm. this grows and grows until it becomes its own thing, like like a Frankenstein, for example. Till mm -hmm. when you feed it, feed it, feed it, all of a sudden it tells you what it wants to be, and sometimes it can get more powerful than you. So it depends on what energy you put in it, the so, power that it gets. So when you put in, you receive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how long you will actually? Into music and stuff like that. Always. always. First, yeah, I mean, always. I like, did school competitions so and you, you, I dropped out of school. You, 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 you sang before you talk? No, I probably, I probably talk, talk first. I get here like, ma, 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 ma. Yeah, I believe him, I believe him. <laughs> so you were singing from such a small age? Yeah, I, I mean, I like just doing art and like, I used to write short stories and mm -hmm. stuff, so then it kind of now I see like, at a certain point, I was like, how come? I get into writing books and I realized well my mom used to get me like a book a day. Mm -hmm. And then I used to write and like you know, most girls like in the in the mirror with a brush singing yeah, and stuff, but I used to do it so much. Like I used to perform for like my friends and stuff. So I realized that like always when people say what well, I used to be all the time, I always wanted to be a singer. So always. You, you don't want me a doctor or a lawyer or Never interested. A no. Nurse. Never interested, you know, and like nurse maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, like always, ah, always. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just always called me because you know we artists are.
different from other people, which means other people are different from us, and for some reason, we can't get it out of us. So the best thing you could possibly do is to find a way to embrace, embrace like what career could fit the person that wants to come out of here. Is it, is it, you know? is it the curse? I, I think sometimes it depends, like different different things, because honestly, artists generally were very emotional. Mm -hmm. You know, if we lose emotion and straighten up and be normal and stuff, then we can't write songs, because I don't have any emotional response to make me write a song. I don't have compassion, or I don't look at certain things and see, so you know, the waves and the tiles. Everybody so just it, sees tiles. It must be balanced, so it can't be too balanced. Um, I think it's a it's a balance, but it's not a ba it's not like a cookie cutter mold. Mm -hmm. We're not in the same mold like different groups of people. Scientists are not in the same mold as teachers. Sure. Teachers are not in the same mold as artists. You know what I mean? So it's to find that balance in the space that you live in, mm -hmm. whether that's your head. <laughs> or that's your space that you live in. Because it could be a bit of imbalance when, you know, you are saying things like, look at the moon tonight, I feel like the sky is smiling, and people are like, <laughs> that's not enough. Exactly, so for me, I'm like, I don't mind, because I understand that's my superpower. You, that's your superpower is to see different things I can't see. Add 1,200 numbers, I can't, I can't add that, you know? So you want creative so, or artistic? Yeah, so. So your first song. My first first song was something called Round the Clock Rainbow, so cheese polish. But it was not even that was like in school. So nerdy. <laughs> my first I know, yeah. Well one of my <laughs> friends still remembers that song, dude. I'm like, oh my god, it was so cheesy. But um then when I first got my guitar, this um, guy named Jeff Glitz because I started luckily, um, after Chris Allman I went straight to Eddie Grant. He found us through his daughter somehow and then I learned everything. That was like, I literally for years of my life was locked off in the studio from 6.30 in the morning to 6.30 the next morning. Every day of my life for at least five to seven years. So with that as my background, once I started learning the guitar, Jeff bought me a guitar because he realized, you know, she writes some nice songs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I used to play a guitar that my mother had with one string. So he was like, man, him and my friends um, from the school legend that I used to be in, they bought me a guitar and then I just started songwriting, 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 kind of thing, so, yeah, as it feels like, like I said, music, it's every emotion that you possibly could feel, music can catch it, you know, and, you know, people say, on one hand, people say that music doesn't have, like, a spirit with it, but we know it does, because we know when we hear a certain bass, you'd be like, <laughs> and we know when you hear violins, it causes you to feel the different emotions, you know, so, when people say music doesn't have a power, they undermining, underestimating music because music has a power because we know the power that we channel. We don't necessarily even understand that we put it ourselves. Sometimes it surprises us. They want it to be like this badass tune and then it wants to be like a more vibes track and you can feel from the time you heard that first bar start mm -hmm. what animal that music is, that particular song is. So, so when you had first started singing like it was a particular style or genre, you yeah. got a favorite artist or something? Ah, that'll have to be Damien Marley. Damien Marley? <laughs> Dang it, yeah. I mean, I love. It doesn't look singing, though. It doesn't look singing. No, man, no, man. That's. You that's, know, you're like, girls singing no. some Marty's. Or, you no, know, that's, like, uh, that's, that's, that's for me. I mean, I see enough good looking people in my life, but I have a word style. Like, my, one of my best friends knows she's like, I do not know your type. I don't have a. Like, I like guys who look like this, or I like men who are like that. And But me being attached to him is not necessarily what he looks like. I mean, mm -hmm. there's lots of pretty people in the world, gorgeous people in the world, handsome people in the world. It's, the certain vibration that comes from this person, the, the lyrics, yeah, the energy, the lyrics that this person channels and stuff. And it's not only him, it's him, Sting, Eddie Grant, Tracy Chapman, Buju, Shaba, Gosh Daddy. Like these are people, Masha, Montano, that from different genres, I just listen to everything. Mm -hmm. So like for me, it's like, and if you name Marley, then I love you too <laughs> because they carry Marley. a certain message. Yeah, no, they just, they carry a certain message. Like Stephen Marley was saying, he's like, whether I'm jumping up and down, whether I'm just singing a real, real cool thing, it's always a positive message. So for me, I can identify with that, as opposed to people that I might not, I might feel it's a nice song, they sing it well, I can say, well, I really like that song. But I might not feel this attachment, you know what I mean? So it's just, I have that attachment for those kind of people who tell stories, that every time I listen to it, I'm hearing someone else like, sure, when I'm not cheese on bread, like that, that gets me like, hi, kind of 